and welcome back to my studio. Well, we're going to do a little fun painting demonstration today in gouache paint. A cute Italian Vespa motorcycle. What could be more fun than that? Just something that it will be great for beginners as well. And you can have fun creating this funky little painting in gouache paint. Let's have a look. Okay, I'm going to try painting this Vespa scooter. It's a super trendy machine and it looks great. So is it going to be easy enough to paint in gouache? Well, everything can be made simpler to paint. This is quite tricky if you really want to get it perfect. You can try drawing this out very carefully and then painting it. Or as I'm going to do, just imagine I'm in a coffee shop across the road and I'm doing a little plein air study. So I'm going to draw it out roughly and then paint it with gouache and we'll see how it works out. I'm not looking for perfection, but just a fun, colorful and uh, funky little painting. Now finally, I just want to mention, I'm going to make this reference available to you for free. Just visit the link in the description and uh, you'll see that I've included it in a little free course where I give you the opportunity to try out some of the YouTube paintings that I've done. And I'm including this one with the video and then you can download the reference as well. All for free, so check that out if you're interested. All right, let's have a look. This is my basic palette, just a few extra colors, mostly turquoise blue. That's going to be an important color for this. Starting off with a quick pencil sketch and just placing the dimensions of the, the scooter more or less where I wanted to follow the size of the um, the front of the scooter more or less the same as the the wheel area as well so i'll just measure that with a pencil getting that sketch in very roughly and uh, i will tweak the sketch as it were as i do the the painting i just want to get a quick start to this so simplifying background details using a short flat uh, nylon brush very uh, basic brushes. I prefer to use um, simple acrylic type brushes for gouache painting. Now, as you can see, the background is quite complex. You can spend some time with that if you want to get a, a more accurate painting. And it's not a, an attractive background. But uh, a bit more emphasis on the the scooter, of course. So background's just going to be soft edged and sort of out of focus. Using burnt sienna and, and touch of blue to do the seat, that uh, leather color. And then getting some of that turquoise blue to start off the, the bike colors. This is quite transparent at the moment. I haven't added much uh, white paint to it. None at all, actually, at this point. Touch of primary yellow, a little bit of ultramarine where I want the turquoise to be a bit darker. Also some alizarin crimson that I'll bring into it to get a more purple uh, dark color. I've switched to a round brush, which I feel is just a little better to handle these shapes. The, the shapes of the scooter are quite organic, rounded shapes. Now bringing in that gouache white paint and of course the gouache paint looking really good with uh, that uh, opaque white paint into it, bringing out those colors, but of course also cooling them down so keep the saturation up to avoid losing that uh, bright saturated look and you end up with something that's too cold and white. Now what I'm doing is sort of looking at the reference very quickly 
all the time just keep looking up at your reference and putting down shapes as you see them light or dark or warm and cool color that's the main consideration now as i'm looking at it i do notice some uh, the alignment or the um, proportion of the the scooter i've got it more sort of side on towards us whereas in the reference it's a little more three quarter but that's fine i think it'll still read correctly um, but if you want to spend a bit more time just getting the drawing more accurate of course that won't be a problem very easy to change that and of course why not do a few of these paintings by doing sketches like this you learn to interpret the scene and simplify it very quickly and that is a great skill to to work on it improves your decision making and makes these sort of outdoor sketches or studies or travel log sketches you may do when you take a a book with you and some paints on your travels you have to be able to work pretty quickly and have a a quick way of making decisions and getting down shapes so I'm bringing a bit more saturation into the burnt sienna to for the seat and still adding a few more details but for the most part the a scooter will now start getting its second layer and then when I do the background I will cut in here or there to adjust shapes where necessary where they are too big I generally start with shapes a little big and cut in with background colors to get a, sometimes a bit more interesting shape that way the little uh, top box at the back of the bike is a little too big at the moment and I will cut in there as I get into those background shapes just reducing it a little more uh, because the the scooter is mostly blue I'm going to try and bring in more orange into that background as I proceed and that will of course just help to make the, the blue pop a little more. Mostly diagonal composition lines in the background suggesting windows perhaps. But also adding a little bit more of a dynamic background. Getting some darks back in to adjust the, the shapes. Now the front wheel is quite a complicated area and I think I'm going to have to redo the uh, the, the little mud guard on that front wheel probably a few more times. Of course using a larger brush doesn't help initially um, to get your details perhaps as correct as you'd like but it certainly helps with simplifying the overall painting and avoiding a lots of fiddling especially with a more technical subject like this and I desperately try to avoid getting sucked into technical details now getting a little more yellow into the turquoise to get the, the sunny warm light on the scooter which I think works very nicely with a touch of white lots of reflective surfaces which is very nice of course to add those little sparkles but with gouache as it dries it dries a bit darker and you find that you do come back in and push the the lights a little more that is part of the quirk of the the medium and you have to allow for that only when the color has dried do you get a proper sense of what it's going to be fortunately it all dries pretty darn quick i'm working on cold press watercolor paper and it's ideal for for gouache 
dries really nicely. This is a Fabriano watercolor sketchbook. The paints mostly all Windsor and Newton, a uh, designer's gouache. So the shape of the overall scooter, the impression, is starting to pull together and I'm feeling a bit more happier about it. Isn't it always the case? You start off, I'm really not familiar with this subject at all. I just thought it would be a nice change to try this. And uh, just jump in. And like I said in the beginning, imagine you are painting this on plain air outdoors and you've got 20 minutes to do it. You're going to have to move pretty quick and uh, get that impression of the lights and darks and and uh, it's starting to come together so I'll have to just also resolve the background a little more, do a little more cutting in to fix up shapes but right now let's get a few sparkles and highlights you notice on my palette I've put the white paint, the white gouache, on um, a tear-off palette rather than in the, the paint box itself. One tends to use quite a bit of white paint. And uh, I don't want it getting into my colors unless I absolutely want it mixed in. Also giving me a bit more space to mix my colors, which is always helpful. Well, let's just see how things look with the background. A bit more yellow. Suggested lights on the, the side of the building, or it could be windows. I'm putting in a touch of red to suggest a street sign. Repeating that red in the, the building. Some lights in the foreground. A little too much white, perhaps. Let's just warm that up. Not so sure about that yellow. I prefer the orange and it also makes the blue stand out nicely. So let's get a bit more orange in there. Creating a sort of a modern look, kind of a contemporary appearance, I think. So it's been fun doing this. I, I have enjoyed it. It is a little challenge and uh, Painting it loose is always a challenge because you have to fight that temptation to make the details stand out a bit more. But uh, whatever option you choose, you can find the, the reference in the link to this video as well if you want. And uh, try it out for yourself. A little bit of violet in the shadows there. Touch more red. I think we're pretty much done. So let's just sign it off and get the tape off and have a final look. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little uh, painting demo. Something fun, a very cute little subject to try out as well. Painted many ways. The more you paint it, the more freedom you're going to bring into your brush strokes and color. It's not something you can expect to be perfect the first time around, but you'll still have fun discovering a few tricks of how to paint subjects like this. Now, if you want to learn more about gouache painting, I have a couple of gouache painting courses for beginners and a more advanced one as well. You'll also find that in my painting school. And you'll find a link in the description to a free little course where you can try out this demonstration for yourself amongst other YouTube videos that I've included with the reference photos. So you can practice those as well. If you've enjoyed the video, 
please give it a like please make sure you've subscribed as well and share it with your painting friends more people painting the better all right until next time enjoy your painting and cheers for now